if you hang out with the radiologists a lot and you look at uh, tumors on x-rays, they'll tell you, well, if you see a tumor that's towards the center of the lung or the hilum, uh, it's more likely to be a squamous cell carcinoma. If you see a tumor out at the periphery of the lung, it's more likely to be an adenocarcinoma. Uh, I wonder if they ever really know why they're saying that. Because the reason is, is that at the hilum of the lung are the large bronchi. The bronchi are lined with squamous cells. Whereas by the time you get out more towards the periphery, there hardly are any more uh, squamous cell lined bronchi anymore. So that's why the more peripheral the primary tumor is, the more peripheral the primary malignancy is, the more peripheral the primary non-small cell carcinoma is, the more likely it is to be adeno, and more centrally, the more likely it is to be squamous. Here's something which is uh, tooted as a peripheral tumor, but in all honesty, uh, you could say it looks like it's about halfway. It doesn't look too close to these large bronchi, but it's not exactly kissing the pleura either. So uh, let's call this a little bit more peripheral. The reason why I am is because I'm being very prejudiced, and I already know what it is. Uh, let's take a look at it microscopically, and we could see that... Uh, It may appear very soon, and you could see normal spongy lung out here, maybe even a little emphysematous if you think some of these alveoli are bigger than they should be. And then you could see an irregular margin. You could imagine even now that there are some lymphoid nodules and lymphocytes at the interface between this tumor and the lung. And up here you might even be able to see a germinal center, and possibly here too. But here's the lung. Let's say we didn't know it was at the periphery or the hilum, and we just wanted to blow it up a couple of notches. So in two clicks, we'll find out what it is, because we can see that this tumor is forming nice little glands, even at this power, very easily. Asini, basically. Um, and, and also, in all honesty, again, do we know whether this adenocarcinoma started out in the lung as a primary tumor, or whether it's metastatic from a glandular epithelium somewhere else, uh, like GI or practically any place. We don't know. Uh, we could do tumor markers, perhaps, and if we found some specific antigens on these cells, which are only found, let's say, on pancreas or whatever, then we could say uh, that it was. But that doesn't happen very often, and... Uh, Usually, uh, it could be a tough problem, and uh, it's not always easily solved. But a solitary peripheral adenocarcinoma would more likely be a primary than uh, little uh, tumor nests all over the place. Uh, in this case, it was a primary, but you'll have to take that on faith because if you said, could this be a metastatic colon cancer or pancreas cancer, I'd have to say yes, yes, yes. And once again, all the cytologic features of malignancy as well. Big nucleoli, lumpy, bumpy nuclei. There's a mitosis, there's a mitosis, there's a mitosis. And uh, if we go out towards the periphery of it and back down a little bit, we will see that uh, as for the immune reaction to this tumor, we're probably going to see more uh, lymphocytes perhaps at the periphery. We could already see them scattered throughout here and here and here in the middle, but we could see some reaction to this tumor out at the periphery also, uh, in which we have a larger collections of lymphocytes attacking it around the edge. Um, I don't think I want to say anything more. Uh, these little uh, nests here are tumor cells. Here's lymphocytes. This little nest with pigment uh, is probably macrophages that have taken up blood pigment because you can see there's a lot of blood vessels around here. So the more this tumor has hemorrhaged, uh, the uh, more like, especially chronically, the more likely you are to see these little uh, hemosiderin laden macrophages uh, within the uh, uh, hemorrhagic area. Now, if you ask me, could this be melanin? I would have to think, well, maybe. If you say, could this be anthracosis? I'd have to say no. 
because anthracosis is pitch black. If you say, could this pigment be tattoo? I'd have to say no. People don't get tattoos in their lungs, especially lung tumors. Uh, plus, it's not black enough. If you say, could this be lipofusion pigment? I would say no, because that's only in viable cells that are aging like the heart. If you said, could this be bile? I'd say, well, you shouldn't normally have bile inside of a lung tumor, should you? But notice one more thing. Even though this whole big thing is a lung tumor, in this particular cut section, you could see a few tumor cells out here in the southeast, but the rest of this stuff is blood vessels, fibrous tissue, lymphocytes. So by pure weight alone, you would say the majority of this area is not actually cancer cells. The majority of this area by weight are cells that are in reaction to it, but you still weigh the tumor. So when you weigh a tumor and it weighs two, five, ten, hundred grams, uh, it's often possible that the actual cancer cells, tumor cells, are a relatively small percentage of that, like they are here. Let's say, let's go to another random part of the uh, thing of the tumor and you could say well there's tumor cells there there but still you'd probably say the majority of the actual bulk tissue in this field is also not malignant cells either okay adenocarcinoma of the lung primary by history and possibly by location all the classical features however if uh, this patient had a lobectomy because of uh, adenocarcinoma of the lung and then a few months or a few years later, you found out that it was really coming from the pancreas or a salivary gland or colon or whatever. Then uh, you might wonder if it was really primary all along, wouldn't you? But if you have a tumor in the lung and there is absolutely no evidence of cancer anywhere else, then you are obliged probably to do the pneumonectomy when you think of the uh, moral and prognostic and mathematical uh, statistics. Thank you very much.